you cannot see the wind, but we know the wind is there because we can feel it. Mm. Even if you take your hands and go like this, you will feel wind. So what that wind is, is air. It's, it's just composed of air. What air is, is the formless substance. Can you get away from air? No. Once you understand this, that you can't get away from air and that whatever you think and you hold in this air, it comes to be. Hey, what's up, Masters? Welcome to another episode of Path to Mastery Podcast, and we are with Mr. Jay Noland, Jay Noland Official. What is up, man? Everything is up. Glad to be here with you. I've got uh, I've got a great feeling about this because I got a great feeling about you. I dropped in, heard you speak for the first time. I said, this is my type of man. He has got it point blank. You're going to know exactly where you're at with David right away. And he, what I love about when you bring it, you're not, you're bringing like the truth. You're bringing like the real and you're bringing impact. Whenever I hear somebody like that, I'd say that's going to move the bar, help people get better quickly. So I appreciate you and, and how your approach is, David. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate you as well. And I love, I love your approach. And I love how you give, man. You just were given, you give to the room, you you sponsored some books. You you got some people into uh, Keontae's app. Um, so I just love your giving heart and the message was powerful. You rem remind me of my friend Tim Story, man. I don't know. Do you know who Tim Story is? Yeah, that sounds way familiar. Tim, Tim, well, he's he's someone you want to know, man. He's, he's no joke, man. He's friends with Oprah. He's 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 a, he's a real deal, man. And when he shares, man, it, it's it's powerful. So appreciate you, man. Thank you for that. That's All right. Here, so, so who are you? As people are probably saying. So, what we're going to talk about today is uh, we're going to talk about confidence, uh, motivation, and confidence. That's that's what I come up with for the title. I like um, that. You know, and yeah, like how and how do we? Uh, and you've got an interesting title for your book, which we're going to get to in a couple minutes too. Like, I want to I want to understand the title of your book, uh, right. the powerful the power of a woman from the perspective of a real man. So we we're going to have to. Hit that as well. Right? I, was, I was like, all right, I don't get yeah. that one, but uh, right, we, 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 we got some right. angles already. Yeah, amen. Um, all right, so you are an international motivational speaker, former professional athlete. What what sport, Jay? Baseball. Baseball. Okay, who'd you play for? Padres, four years, Rockies, Mariners, a year each. Oh, nice. Good for you, man. You Finished back in 1995. I climbed all the way up the ladder. I finally get my major league contract. I, I'm, I'm in, you know, I'm, I'm about to hit it big. I'm roommates with Alex Rodriguez playing next to Griffey and bam, blew Malbo out at the same time. So, but oh, it was man. a great run. It was a great run though. We're going to get a, I want to see if I can get my boy Tyrone Poole in here, man. He's uh he's hanging out on the, you know, Tyrone Poole, right? Yeah. I don't know if you know him. Yeah. He's a good guy. I'm going to see if I can ping him in here. So get, tell us a little bit about you, man. Let's tell, who are you? You know, what, what are you doing here right now? Why should people be listening to you, man, besides all the things I said earlier? I, I don't think it's so much they, they should be listening to me. They should be listening to themselves better. Mm. And so what I like to do is just help get people to get that part because I didn't get that part. I'm a country boy, man. I, I was born and raised in Kentucky. I'm 54 years old right now. So I was born in 1968 in the Deep South, um, about a month after Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated. So I grew up in a lot of racial tension a lot of strife. And, you know, we lived off the land. My, my, my granddad, he raised hogs. So we were always run, what we call running 75 to 100 hogs at any one time. Now, for those folks that don't know what hogs are, that's mm. big. They're big. Oh, and hogs. Uh, <laughs> hogs is what you said. I, yeah. Right. You sound like you're from yeah. Massachusetts now. Yeah, I got the hogs <laughs> going on. But I, I grew up, you know, on the farm. You know, I never knew much about success principles other than you work hard. And then you you know you make what you what you what you can create, and and so that was my background, man. Coming off the land, and then I got an opportunity to you know being in school, getting around some good coaches, and then my dad made a very uh, key move. So for me at the time it was devastating, but he left Kentucky when him and my mom divorced when I was nine, 
and he moved to Florida. And when I turned, you know, 15, 16, I moved to Florida, which put me in a much more exposed environment when it comes to sports. Mm. And so I finished my high school, my last two years of high school in Florida, uh, went, uh, signed a, got a scholarship, went to Central Florida Junior College for a couple of years, then signed with the University of Miami, which was a dream for me, and got drafted by the San Diego Padres in 1988 at the same time. I got tired of eating spaghetti 45 different ways in college. So I said, hey, give me the money. But you know what, David? You give a 19-year-old that hadn't been trained what to do with money, like most people, and that money's not going to be around long. So I blew through some money. Like I say, played professional baseball. Blew my elbow out in 95. Got involved in entrepreneurship. Learned about things like Think and Grow Rich. And then since then, have built businesses around the globe. Done businesses in 90 countries. I've done personal seminars big scale in 20 plus countries around the globe and just been able to uh, enjoy reaching, connecting and, and, and going through with a lot of people, helping Mm. them get to different levels while I've grown at the same time. I love it, man. And you are, uh, you've built multiple multi-million dollar companies. You focus on helping people with their subconscious mind. Right. And, and you also, you, you, you have different methods of confidence training. I want to, I want to know more about confidence training. Like for everybody, what, tell us, how, how do you train confidence? Well, the great philosopher Aristotle said, give me a child until they are seven and I'll show you the adult. So break that down. Give me a child until they're seven years old and I'll show you the adult. I'll show you the man or woman. Because what happens in science is that scientifically has been proven that from zero to seven, pretty much our entire foundation of our subconscious mind is now made up. Mm. And so for the rest of our lives, if and everybody can research this, for the rest of our lives, we're running as adults based upon what happened to us from zero to seven. The issue with that and the challenge with that, David, is none of us had any influence from zero to seven. You didn't get to pick your parents. You didn't get to pick what you ate. You didn't get to pick who, who watched you, what you got educated with, what you drank, none of that what you wore for clothes, none of that we got to pick. And so here we are, zero to seven. Here's our subconscious mind. So I went and studied this. I had to study this because I was having a, a deep issue with being feeling happy inside. So no matter how much I was succeeding outwardly in life, inside I just couldn't get happy. And I was like, what the hell is going on? Mm. Well, that traces back to what happened to me from zero to seven. At seven years of age, my dad shot himself. And I was close by. Now, he ended up living through it. I guess the story is he meant to kill my mom and then himself. But he eventually just turned the gun around himself and he tried to shoot himself in the heart. And he missed and lived through it. But all those years went by where, you know, after he came out of surgery and he healed up, he just became like dad again. But in my mind, the whole time I'm looking at this man like, number one, I mean, are you going to snap at any time? Number two. Why did you want to leave me? And so as I dissected that, I figured out that's why I wasn't really happy because my, my mom, she ended up abandoning. Who could blame her? She left. So I just started focusing on what are the modalities out there that I could use to be able to, to, to help heal what was going on in me. And, and most people say emotion or mental, but it's really subconscious is the issue. I found if you could help heal and nurture your subconscious, that's where all your happiness or potential happiness resides, David. Mm. And I've got, I've got different methods to be able to, to make that happen now. You, you know, I, I was, uh, interesting enough, I was interviewing, um, earlier today I interviewed uh, Rex Sykes and we were just having a similar conversation about- Close, um, close friend of mine. Oh, really? Close. Oh, wow. That, really? Okay. Oh, like wow. Brother, you, brother. No, yeah. No idea, man. No idea. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so it's uh, and he was also talking about, you know, subconscious and, you know, just just being grateful, enjoying life, being present. And yep. why, why, subconscious keeps coming up today. Why? Why is that so like how like I would say, like, I'm trying to think of a, a question here, <laughs> like when it comes to subconscious mind, like because it, it's really everything. But most people don't spend enough time. Right. Or, or are we able to spend like how do we how do we fix our subconscious mind, or is there even a way to fix it? Oh yeah, there's a way. It's called reprogramming. Everything you know now is based on a program. 
Brain waves is a big deal. So what happens with your brain waves is critical. So they've got these things called delta, theta, right? You got you know beta, you got gamma, you got all these different brain waves. So based upon how fast your those waves are happening is determine how, what they call those waves. Well, from zero to four hertz per second, as your brain is waving, you're in what's called a delta state. That's why they always tell you get a good deep REM sleep, a delta sleep. That's where you can really heal, you can restore, you can rest. But most people don't get a good delta sleep because they're stressed out. From four hertz to eight hertz is when you move into theta. Theta is kind of like a hypnotic state. What's interesting about this, David, is from two to seven, our brains are operating at theta in like mm. a hypnotic state. That's why if I ask you questions about, hey, Dave, what was going on with you when you were four? You know, it's like you can't pick it up because you were in a hypnotic state. But that is the most influential state. That's where you can, that's where you learn the most. Like my son is seven. He's completely bilingual. He goes in and out of English and Spanish all the time, no problem, because he's in that theta state where he can just absorb so much. So you got two ways to be able to correct your programming. And, and, and this is important for everybody to understand because your entire immune system, I ask people this, I don't know if you knew this, David, your entire immune system is housed in your subconscious mind. And so... That's just how powerful this is. So if you look at how many people are sick, well, it could be because they have a sick subconscious. Hmm. Well, if we take some time to deal with this, you got two ways. You can bull rush it. So there's a book that you probably heard of before. It's called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Yes. So if you read that book, he'll talk about auto-suggestion. Now, it's important when you do auto-suggestion. If you do, He says do it when you first wake up. But Napoleon didn't tell you why that's critical. Because when you're first waking up, you're in theta. Mm. So you can get it deep. Um, you do it right before you go to sleep. As you're getting real tired, you start to doze off. You start moving into theta. If you do auto-suggestion and you do that long enough, then you can bull rush your subconscious mind. The problem is most people have life life on them. They got all these distractions. They got all this stress. And so they get off chart of it and you got to keep starting over. Or mm -hmm. you can do this thing, which hardly anybody knows about. And I'm going to hope, do all I can to let the world know about it. It's called brainwave entrainment. Brainwave entrainment is through sound frequencies. So there's things called binaural beats. And there's going to probably be people, uh, if you're in the chat over on Clubhouse, they can they can talk about, hey, do I do you know anything about binaural beats? Do you know anything about sulfigio tones? Do you know anything about isochronics? They didn't teach us any of this stuff in school, but I wouldn't study. That. And so I wanted to be happy. I couldn't get over this thing with my mom and my dad. So I went and got some of the world's top sound experts and with music, layer these tones and specific coded hurts over beautiful music and then i started reconditioning my subconscious mind wow. and i don't care what anybody says i'm talking about for me for me after about 21 days at about 11 minutes a day all that bitterness all of that it just went away from me so i coded something for myself then i went and said if this is good for me i'm gonna make it for the world so i created confidence tones.com where people you can go over and test it out so confidencetones.com, you can go over. And if you got a, a good pair of uh, headphones, just put them on. And man, you can dial in pretty much what you want, David. It's, it's really a trip. Are, are you familiar with, um, I believe it's called Center Point. It's a, it's a form of meditation where yes. you, it's, it's similar. It sounds, it gets you into that theta brainwaves. Yeah. yeah, I've been meditating for, uh, God, probably 15 years now. So you understand uh, that? I mean, it's uh, well, you know, I'm I'm on T. I do TM. I do T transcendental now. It's a little different. I'm not getting the sounds, but uh, you just kind of reminded me of that, and I may look. I have to go check that out again because it's powerful. How does every, it, every morning I wake up, I put my headphones on first, first thing in the morning. Yeah, is yeah. somebody able to um into to get into that data via? Because you mentioned sleep earlier, but how yeah. would you how would you achieve that through sleep? Well, I got specific tones. Like I've got one called slumber tones. 
and we code it to put you into Delta. And that puts you into a deep sleep. It's kind of funny because anytime my son has an issue sleeping, we just take the tones, put them by him, then five minutes he's gone or less. Mm-hmm. And so uh, he'll ask for them sometime. Like he'll be kind of like restless. He'll say, Mommy, can you bring me the tones? And so, yeah, you, it's just you just co- it's just based on how you code it. And, you know, and again, if you if you want to get specifics on it, I can dial in and we can, you know, uh, hurry the conversation. But I've got people that's really understanding how important this is. And I just think it's just a, you know, a healthier alternative. Not that I tell people you go get professional help if you. But if you want to use some uh, some alternative healthier self-care methods this is just one of them that i love yeah so how how important so what i'm taking and i I wrote this down earlier so you know listening to you so pro our programming is is what affects our subconscious mind so if there's a way to change our programming we can change our subconscious mind is that absolutely absolutely 100%. 100%. You change your program. Because what, why, how is it that you believe what you believe? You know, like you got things in you, you just, you just do what? Unconsciously. Let's take it this way. Uh, driving. When you first were learning how, to, learning how to drive, what were you doing? 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock on the steering wheel, you know, put your blinker on 500, you know, yards, feet, you know, in front of, before you get to the next person. So you think about driving now. If you ever drove somewhere and you go, how did I even get here? And like, mm-hmm. like women, you'll catch them sometime doing makeup and you know, and they got the kids and they there's no way they can know what they're doing. They're doing that subconsciously. So there's four mm-hmm. levels of consciousness. You know, you've got unconscious incompetence. Then you've got what's called, I should say competence. There's four levels of competence. You got unconscious incompetence where you just don't know what you don't know. Then you got conscious incompetence where you admit that you don't know that's the big learning part it's called humility and then you've got conscious competence now i know it 10 o'clock two o'clock keep miles on the road blinker in and then i do that long enough and then it becomes unconscious competence so there's things we do in our life now we don't have to think about them at all it's unconscious yeah. competence well you're being tra- something knows that what is it that knows that it's your subconscious so I was able to go back and figure out those unconscious, competent, crazy feelings about what my dad did inside. And I started just listening to tones and suggestive. We can, we mix in, people can do it just with the tones, but we can also do suggestions with, with the tones. So while we can walk you through a modality, we can just talk to you about who you really are. And it's amazing, man. If you do that repetitiveness with those tones, it just conditions for me, it conditions. And I just start feeling different. Like I'm, I just got to, <laughs> I, and it was up in my forties. I'm like, I'm happy, you know? And then I asked my dad, I had to get the guts to ask him why he did what he did. I didn't ask him until I was like 48, 49 years old. And when I asked him, David, he put his head down immediately. Look down, tears all in his eyes. He says, son, I was just being young, dumb, and stupid. He goes, I was trying to keep your mama from leaving me. He walks over and gives me the biggest hug. He's squeezing me. He goes, I'm mm-hmm. sorry, son. You forgive me? I said, daddy, I forgive you. So that 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 bitterness in me turned immediately through the process of me getting my subconscious mind together. It turned into empathy. And man, empathy is a whole different level. It turned into gratification. So I started really being grateful that I was able to help my dad through. It helped heal him, you know, because imagine what he was thinking to have done that. Yeah. Yeah, it's powerful, man. You know, I I haven't uh, I haven't seen my father in uh, uh, probably since I was 13. So it's been a minute. Yeah. So anyway, I'm not, I don't want to get into all that, but I, you know, I got a lot of stuff there from the childhood, man. I, you know, yeah. so a lot of stuff. Lot of I'm going to get you access, get you some VIP access and you can tell everybody what you think. All right, man. Absolutely. I'll take you up on that. So I want to talk about the title, man. So, that, you know, this is something I've been working on myself, man. You know, 20, 20 years of just personal development, trying to fix a broken individual and I, and I hate to say broken but that that was what I, that's what that was the result of what i took from my childhood you know right right 
And uh, so it, it's work, it's consistency, it, it's it's time on task over time. You know, uh, earlier Rex talked about awareness, aware. You know, like I'm aware. My wife says that to me all the time. Like you're just, oh, you have this awareness about stuff, and I, and I do. You know, um, but I want to talk about the title. I don't want to talk about all about me, man, and my my issues. So. I love doing podcasting because it's like free coaching, man. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. You start getting it out. You know? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, I've had some cool people on, man. I'll tell you, Mel Robbins came on, and she was just – she's a freaking beast, man. You're a yeah, beast, boy. but I'll tell you, she just – she, you know what she said? I'll tell you the one thing that she said that stuck with me is she said when your alarm clock goes off and you hit the snooze button – you just hit you just gave up on your whole all day's goals like you just shot your whole goals for the day you just said that my day's not even important i'll promise you i've never hit my snooze button again after that uh i it's said you're subconscious much. now see yeah it's in my it is in my subconscious <laughs> let's talk about the title man um so i put together a uh, motivation building motivation and confidence i don't i don't even know if those i just that was my title i come up with right um are they connected? Motivation and confidence? Yeah, do you think they're connected in a way? At one million percent, right? Because if, if that's why motivation is so important because it gives you the energy to do something. If I'm not motivated, I'm not gonna do it. Just like the alarm clock. See that that arm reaching or not reaching is based on the motivation. Well, you gotta put it in the bathroom too, by the way. That's your next tip. <laughs> it has to go. You can't reach it. Got to be out of arm's length. You know, right? go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. That's a great tip. Everybody stick yeah. their alarm clock in the you bathroom. Gotta, get that phone no, there. they're completely connected, man. I tell everybody, if you got enough motivation and inspiration, you can conquer the world. You can conquer your world at least. So just yes, one million percent. Mm. So how does somebody? Uh, so I want to. I want to talk to. I want. I want some people to maybe come in here. Maybe with everything happening right now, Jay. You know, we we got. You know, we got inflation we got a con we, i mean it's reality right there's there's yeah. some people aren't doing so great right now maybe that maybe how, how does someone get through this and what would you say to some people like when it comes to confidence and and right now how does somebody show up maybe on the inside you know because here's the reality for a lot of years i i had to show up like i was a trainer i'd go in front of a room of a of 125 people and on the inside man i was scared to death like uh, a like a athletic trainer, physical trainer. No, no. Uh, so I used to do. I used to teach for uh, for my old for Keller Williams. I would do training oh, on like a teach a class, but on the inside, I was so scared, man. And, but I just kept showing up, and I kept showing up. You know. So, what I mean, what do you say to people that kind of feel like that? Like maybe because a lot of people wouldn't even take the stage, right? You know. One, or, one, one of the greatest fears that people have is public speaking. And a lot of times I, I, I get people that just, I say, look, I want you to picture you outside looking at you. And they, I said, can you do that? They go, yeah, I can do that. And I, and I asked them a few more questions and we just, we're talking like me and you're talking a few more questions. Right. And then I go, okay, now here, we're just talking. Here comes a microphone in front of your face. So what changed? And they go, well, it's the microphone. I'm like, how much power does the microphone have? And they go, I said, okay, me and you are talking. Here's a group of people that's coming looking at us. Mm. Aren't we still having a conversation? And they go, yeah, but they're over there. Oh, so the whole issue is the microphone, external, those people, external. Well, how come when it was just me and you talking, you didn't go to external? Why were you just talking to me without sweating, without yeah. freaking out? Like, what, 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 what's the difference? And they say, well, I was more comfortable because it's just me and you talking. And I say, that's how you do public speaking. You just have a conversation as if you're talking to each person or as if I'm talking to the mic as if it was a living, breathing being. So I give my microphones life. I give, And, it, and it's important to me. I'm going to tell you why. Because my entire foundation when it comes to success principles was originally built off of Think and Grow Rich, which I read November of 1995. That book was that book was written in 1937-ish. Mm. Then last year, and I've been hearing about the science of getting rich the whole time. For, so for 25 years, I've been hearing about the science of getting rich by Wallace D. Waddles, 
but I have my thing thinking grow rich. As a matter of fact, I'm one of three people in the world, three people in the world that has their own the Napoleon Hill Foundation sanctioned book where I co-wrote the foreword in a book. As a matter of fact, the book I showed you, this is my own version of this book. Oh, that's awesome. That's by the Napoleon Hill. So that's how deep I was into the book. Then last year, I was watching a, a YouTube video, and everybody should watch it. It's Rhonda Byrne, the founder of The Secret. She's doing an interview on Conscious TV. And Rhonda Byrne, are you looking for your secret book over there? <laughs> yeah, I got I got I got two of two of them. Yeah, you see me. I'm looking over. Like, oh, here, here's here's one. This I got this one here. So. Okay. But I got a couple yes, different ones. Yes, you got the right? juice, see? Yeah, so you got to have that book, right? That's Rhonda Byrne, David says, she says in 2000, it's the first time I really listened to her story. But the way she was talking made me lean in. She goes, in 2004, I just lost my business, $2 million in debt. One of my parents died. I had a child that was bad, bad sick. I was having an emotional breakdown. This is Rhonda Byrne, who created one of the greatest movements ever in personal growth. Mm. She says her adult daughter walked in and gave her, what this one, this is the one I recreated. This one here, The Science of Getting Rich. She gave her an old photocopy of The Science of Getting Rich. And she says, Mom, read that. It'll make you feel better. And she says, all right. So she says she read it in 90 minutes. You ever heard the story? No, I have Dude, not. She says she read it in 90 minutes. Now I'm leaning way in, David. I'm like, this is, I'm leaning way up. She goes, I read it in 90 minutes. She said it changed my life. She goes, I was instantly inspired. And right from that, I created the secret. Hmm. And she says, I didn't worry about how it was going to happen. I took the principles in the book. I immediately applied them. And she says, and that's, and look what's happened. She said, so that book was my inspiration for doing The Secret. I said, damn, I got to read the book. So <laughs> I went immediately and got the book. So here, big thinking grow rich person. Everybody knows me around the world from teaching thinking grow rich. Here, all of a sudden, I read the book. After I read two chapters, I start feeling like as much as I've grown, I started feeling like my life had changed. Like I've been, I had a rebirthing in me. I said, man. I got to teach this book after two, the 17 chapters, I think. After two chapters, I felt like I got to go teach the book. After four chapters, I said, I got to republish the book. I own a publishing company. So I'm like, I told my wife, I said, honey, we're going to republish this book under our, our company, MYB Publishing. And she says, huh? I said, honey, go start reading the book. And by the time I got through with it, I called my wife up. I said, listen, baby, there's no way our relationship is going to be able to be the same if you don't read this book. I said, I'm gone. I said, I am on another level. I mean, David, Ooh. literally, Ooh. I, I want to, I called my best friend. We was at his house. I said, come here, man. He goes, what? I said, let's go out on your porch. I brought the dude out on the porch. Y'all know, you know, it's serious if you take somebody out on the porch. I said, let's go on the porch. We walk out <laughs> on the porch. He said, man, what the hell's going on? I said, bro, I want you to read this book. I said, I want you to look me in the eyes. He said, what? I said, if you don't get this, your best friend, I'm going to be gone personally. I'm going to love you, but you're not going to be able to keep up with me with my growth because I'm going, I'm already all out. Dude, what's the book again? Give me the name of the book, man. What's this book? Science of Getting Rich. All right. Everybody listen. You need to, I'm, I'm, I'm putting this right now on my desktop. I'm, I'm I want you to get, book. if you're going to get it, this is the only brand version in the world. Again, I'm not shy about telling stuff that's going to help people, even if it makes me money. So I'll make some money from this. If Good. you go to my, if you go to, if you go to get S O G R.com, get S O G R.com. I've done a study on it. I did a short movie on it with my production company. And I took this book and this is especially important for women. Because in 1910, when the book was originally written, you know, David, how they talk when a man does this and if a man would do that. And a man, not that he, and I know him because I've got to know his personality through studying him. He, he was talking that language. So women weren't really included on the conversation. They couldn't even vote at that time. Hmm. They couldn't even vote to around 1920, 1919, 1920. So I took, I went and took two months 
on my, my own self. I went page by page, word by word, and I took out all the masculine wording so the ladies don't have to go compartmentalize that. So instead of when it says, and when a man, it says, when a person. And so every all through this whole book, it's demasculine. Let me say demasculinized. So I took out the masculinity just to make it to where I didn't want a woman to go, oh yeah, he's talking about humankind when he says a man. And that's why I had to do it because I said, I'm going to teach it all over the world. I said, I'm going to teach this book all over the world. Now, and here's what happened. So Forbes Riley, she hears me talk. She goes, huh? She goes, you serious about this? J.B. Owens, who owns a big part, she goes, Jay, I mean, they can feel me like you feeling me now. So they are, they immediately go, I'm, I'm gonna get. The, they went and got it. So we got a whole little mini movement going now, because of the philosophies that are so simple, it like almost frees you immediately. Hmm. That's good, man. That's good. You know, it, I, I just, it's interesting. I, I'm glad you brought that circle because. When I brought up um, the speaking, I wasn't necessarily talking about public speaking as I was being somebody that would had to get up in front of a room and people would have th thought I was like really confident. Yep. But on the inside, I was I was very unconfident and uncertain. And you know what I mean? And I think a lot of people, unfortunately, we just so you deal with like, that. You felt like you grew up that way? I well, I've come a long way from from that point in my life, but um, I just grew up. I carried a lot of stuff from my childhood with me. You know, I carried a lot of those yeah, like baggage. When, when, when dad, when dad jets out like that, it's funny, man. So your dad left. Well, 13, my mom, right? my mom was always run. My dad used to beat everybody, so my mom was always like trying to escape. Like we would go places to try to escape my dad, and he would somehow find us. And then, so that was like my childhood you know, going from different foster, you know, wherever we were, I don't know, my mother, we went to different places, but, but anyway, it, it, you know, like I said, I don't want to get into all that, the but detail. You, but, hey, but the bottom line is you did it. Yeah, we did. We did. But, you know, but is. then you, you gotta, you know, so I'm, I'm just grateful that, you know, I've got three daughters and man, I, I've just been blessed to, to be able to raise them the right way. And they never experienced anything like some of the stuff I went through as a kid. So, um, I, you know, but I, I, the reason I brought that up though is I, I and I'm not, I'm not going to get into the whole. Uh, I've never really understood that term, uh, imposter syndrome. Um, but when I was, w that's what it reminded me of when I was sharing that. Like, did you believe that's real, or is that, is that just? I, it's like a new. I never heard that term before Clubhouse. Personally, yeah, I mean, it's called self sabotage. Same thing. You know, I mean. You got. If I let a dog loose in my house, the dog's gonna tear my house up. Don't. If I let a child loose in my house, the child's gonna tear the house up. Undisciplined people and even animals are not happy. Hmm. So you're not happy until you have structure, until you have discipline. So yeah, I, I completely believe it. That's why I love the book so much. You know, he makes this statement, uh, Wallace D. Waddles, who wrote in 1910, he says, there's a thinking stuff from which all things are made, which in its original state permeates, penetrates, and fills the inner spaces of the universe. So that's his foundation. He says, if you want to change your life, you must first think of this monistic approach that everything is interconnected. And all comes from one original substance. Mm. He says, now this original substance, he calls it thinking stuff, which I, I was like, what the heck is he talking about? Thinking stuff. He says, a thought that's held in this formless substance. So then he goes and opens it up. So listen to those words, formless substance. So how can it, how can it be a substance if it's formless? For those of you seeing the video, you see me doing my hand like this. Mm. How can it be as, as formless? He says, a thought that is held in this formless substance creates the thing that is imagined by the thought. Mm. Now, but you're going, but it's formless. And so what he makes you understand is you cannot see the wind, but we know the wind is there because we can feel it.
Mm. Even if you take your hands and go like this, you will feel wind. So what that wind is, is air. It's, it's just composed of air. What air is, is the formless substance. Can you get away from air? No. Once you understand this, that you can't get away from air, and that whatever you think and you hold in this air, it comes to be. That's how the original creation was created, to continue procreating. So he handles that. Then he handles the guilt issue, which almost everybody listening to us has. He says, and I've got to say this, we're the only people, we're the only species on earth that feel guilty about abundance. If you go outside and look at a tree, can you imagine a tree feeling guilty about growing? about creating, like an oak tree creating more acorns. The, the oak tree doesn't go, man, you know, should I be, should I, should I drop some more of these acorns on the ground and create a forest? Can I, uh, an oak tree don't do that stuff. An oak tree does what it was created to do. Hmm. And guess what we are supposed to do? The same. And so, you see the title, The Science of Getting Rich, and everybody thinks that word rich is talking about money. Money is just a, about a, a, a component of what happens when you understand who you are. It's almost inevitable for money to come track you down once you get you right from this philosophy. Yeah, it's good questions, man. You know, I, I'm thinking about the podcast, and you know, this is uh, done all, over 300 episodes now, and and um, my interviews, I used to go fast, 20, 30 minutes. And you even used, you know, you saw the form I sent you to. I got to fix that because I never, it's always, you know, we're 45 minutes in now. I could do this for another hour with you. Yeah. Um, but, you know, and, and, and I just did similar with, with, it's just the last couple months, it's always gone like this. So I got to fix that. Um, it's just been on my mind because, you know, I, I've been what, you know, pay attention to, to Rex Friedman, who I'm guessing, you know, and Joe, you know, those guys, they do, they do long form content, but, um, I'm not even sure where I was going with that to be honest with you <laughs> at this point. It's just, uh, it, you know, it's good. It's good to have you here. I, I had a question in there somewhere, but let me transition to, uh, to your book title, okay. the power of a woman from the perspective of a real man. What, what, tell us about that. Well, I was influenced so much. That's the book, by the way, right here. And Les Brown wrote my foreword in this book. And the reason Les Brown wrote the foreword in the book is because we were talking and I sent him a copy of it. He said, let me read, let me read it. Once he read it, you read what he wrote because he wrote the foreword. It tripped him out, the angle I was taking because I was ready. It, when my dad shot himself, my mom left. It was Ida Mae Nolan, my grandma who swooped in with my grandfather, but she was the primary love component. I felt her. She nurtured me. So I felt it. And I watched her in that kitchen, man, that hot ass kitchen with no air conditioning. She put breakfast. She cooked breakfast. She made lunch. She made dinner. And when we went to bed, she was tucking us in. She gave her soul to us, me, her three kids, and then her seven grandkids. I was the oldest. And then when I got in business after my, my crazy injury to my elbow, my first three business mentor, mentors were these strong women. And they helped me see things from a perspective. I'm so grateful because as they were teaching me, they said, where does money come from? Have you heard that money doesn't grow on trees? I said, yeah. How many of you have heard of that? You've heard that day, right? Of course. Right? Yeah. You go in the store you know, with, with my grandma out of May. Grandma, I want some of this. I want some of that. She turned around. She goes, listen, boy, money <laughs> don't grow on trees. You know? Yeah. And think about it. From the, a Southern grandma, I never would have said, well, grandma, where does it grow at then? I would have never said that. So you grow up with these complexes about mm. where does money grow? So these business women said money grows in other people's pockets. And who are those people? They're both men 
and women. And they said, she, they were talking to me. They were like, whoever learns to attract the most people, both men and women, will make the most money. Hmm. And I was like, damn. They said, so you having a professional athlete's background, having all this ego, if you let us work with you. And they told me straight up, they says, our whole goal when we work with somebody is to try to get them to quit quick. They said, we don't want to waste time. These women were like, and listen, I was 27. The one that was talking to me. Try to get them to quit. You mean like give up? Like, yeah, they, they just like, like the Navy SEALs, man. They yeah. like, they put you through hard mental I love that. stuff. Yeah. yeah. They said, if you're going to quit, you need to quit. You need to quit. Quick. Yeah, don't waste our time. Let's get they, it done. Right these away. women was in my ass about stuff. They didn't let mm. nothing slip. Nothing. So I'm 27. The one mentor hear me talk about the book, she was 23 from Romania. She didn't even speak good English, but she was documented. She Back then, you could show your checks, what you were making. She showed me her checks, and here I am living with a roommate that blew all my money as a professional athlete, and I got this young 23, or I'm 27, and I'm like, damn. So I was listening to her. She introduces me to her mentor, who was 26, and off the hook. Can y'all feel me when I'm talking? These women were off. And I'll introduce you to some of them sometime. I've let people meet them. And every time they go, damn, to this day, they raise a shot. The 26-year-old introduces me to my core mentor. She's a big whopping 28. So I'm 27. She's 28. And when I first met her, she used to say, listen, honey. She would honey me. She go, listen, honey. I'd ask her a question. She go, listen, honey. I said, how did you do what you've done? Because she was a millionaire, documented millionaire at 28. And I said, how did you do what you did? And she go, listen, honey. <laughs> I got to laugh. Dave was laughing with me. She go, listen, honey. She goes, at the age of 22, I was a bartender. And then I started learning how to duplicate my efforts and create residual income streams, multiple streams of income. But it has to be residual. She goes, so well, most of my friends were running, trying to get their degrees and people were going banging their heads in these corporate jobs. She goes, I've been duplicating and building that residuals for the past six years. And she says, so now I make more in a month than most people make in a year, honey. And she says, so if you listen to me, I can help you. But if not, we'll find somebody that will listen. So I was under that tutelage, man, for about, a, about 18 months. So... Then I progressed, and this was my big. So that stuck with me. Then 2014, my wife gets pregnant. After we found out she's pregnant, I forgot how many weeks it was, but we go in, and they said that this doctor was 85% accurate at predicting the sex of the child. So he predicts, he goes, "That's you're going to have a little girl. When he said, I'm going to have a little girl, you said you got three girls. Imagine when you first heard that. My heart went down in my toes. Because I've been thinking, little boy, little boy, little boy, I'm going to have my son. He says, you're going to have a little girl. I, I got to tell you, I don't know how you dealt with it, Dave. I don't know how you dealt with it because now I got a son. He ended up being a son. But for one month, I thought I was having a girl. And that's what ended up making me write this book. Hmm. Wow. And I write this book as if my little girl's coming in the world. I'm writing this book to create an environment to protect as much as possible my little girl. Wow. So the, the power of a woman from the perspective of real men, that means real men are not afraid of a woman's shine. And I go over statistics because people don't... See, I did a clubhouse March 8th through March... We did 72 straight hours on clubhouse. It was a women's international women's event on clubhouse from March the 8th to March the 11th, 2021, 72 straight hours, one story after the next of abuse of some type of abuse with my wife, put another clubhouse on for 24 hours. It was women's abuse awareness. Thousands, David, of people mm -hmm. came through and we had professionals hired that because we knew it was going to be emotional but it was women's abuse. And during the event, we had some women that were in abusive relationships that were, they got extracted during those events. Wow. Women were getting help. 
So I was sitting there going, man, this is like a theme. Then in my statistics, it says that approximately 137 women get murdered every day in the world by a close associate or family member every day. So it's a, it's really a bad situation. People's trying to sweep it under the rug. I said, the hell with it. If my little girl's coming in this world, I'm going to write to empower and make men think it's a cool thing to not be afraid of a woman's power. That's the, that's the, the gist behind it. Well, I love it, my friend. And listen, I, I, you know, this has been phenomenal. Um, I, like I said, I could definitely go on all day, but we're, we're not going to do that right now. We will schedule another one. Um, how, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you, get a copy of your book? How, how, how do you want us to, to connect with you? Well, you know, my social media, you see Jay Nolan official, that's my Instagram, but you can go to Jay Nolan mastery and Jay Nolan mastery.com. Uh, that will list where you, it'll take you straight over to the, all the different books. And, uh, you know, I'm all, all over social media with different things on, on Facebook is just Jay Nolan, but TikTok is Jay Nolan the fish. I'm starting to TikTok now. Like, yeah, me too. It's funny. Just started, you know, I'm just like trying to get the hang of that. But, uh, you know, really, you know, it's just, if you connect, you'll see my social media, especially if you connect with me on Instagram, you'll see all kind of stuff that I drop. Coincidentally, I started a 10 week challenge yesterday with uh, Billy Jean. You know, Billy Jean, who he is on ah. TikTok. He's a big influencer on YouTube. But he's doing oh, Billy Jean, Billy Jean, out, out yeah, of California. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. He's doing yeah. A, I jumped, jumped in his thing yesterday. It was awesome. So he's That's got great. us all on TikTok, my wife. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of eyeballs on TikTok right now. A man. lot of eyeballs, man. I yeah. tell everybody, get over there. I, I'm, I'm going to give people a secret to TikTok as well. This is. This is this is the first time I'm gonna say this in public on David, his show. So for think, those of yeah. you that are here, you caught a tip. Now what? Here you go. There's a competitor to TikTok that hardly anybody knows about. That's a gold mine. It's called Clapper. Have you heard of it? I have heard of it. Yeah, I have heard of it. Okay. But... I just barely went on there and messed around. Got about three thousand followers that fast. Really? Over on Clapper. I mean, it's crazy. They're very interactive. So it's good to drop some content on Clapper as right. you build up your TikTok. That's a good little tip because you'll and and it's and I think it's very very easy to easier to monetize on there as well. So just a little okay. side note. I love it. Uh, l last question, man. So you you've mentioned uh, Jay Nolan Mastery, right? You added the mastery to the end of the name. Uh, podcast is called Path to Mastery. What does mastery mean to you? Wow, I just picked that up. Mastery means when you have owned your own thoughts on a subject. So until you can think the way you want to think, I'm quoting Wallace D. Wallace again, you can't have a mastery of something unless you think the way you want to think about that subject. Mm -hmm. So that to me is when I can think the way I want to think, that's the first step in owning every portion of my life. So I teach it in six pillars. I believe you got to master six pillars. You got to master your mental, your emotional, emotional, your social, your physical, your spiritual, and your financial. And so to get mastery in all those levels are very important. So I've either mastered them close to mastering and asking people to come on the journey with the mastery as well. So that's why I named it that. Awesome, man. Well, definitely appreciate you. Um, we got some peeps on Clubhouse. Uh, I'm gonna, Club I'm gonna Club shut House. down. I'm gonna shut down. Well, you know what? Let me see. I, we got Karen and Peter. Any, do you either of you guys have a question for Jay before I close it down? I'll, I'll open it up for one question. Anybody if you do give me a mic flash? Yeah, Karen, what's up? How's it going, Karen? Hi, good, David. How are you? Thank you, Jay. That was amazing. I did what are that book as well. So I'm looking forward to learning more about that. And just sure. thank you. It was very inspiring as always, David. Thank you. Appreciate awesome. you, Karen. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Karen. Always, always good to hear from you. All right, Jay. Well, listen, appreciate you, man. Thank you. Yeah, thank um, you. Let's, uh, oh, Peter. What's up, boss? How are yeah, you? I'm being good, man. That was awesome. Thank you, Jay. Really appreciate it. I just ordered the ebook as well. I have a question for Jay. What keeps you focused? What keeps me focused is, is I made a commitment in 1993. I can't shake it. One of my best friends committed suicide. 
the night before I was going to kill myself. The next day, he actually did it. I was going, and I, this is when I was playing pro ball too. And the next day I was training in the off season and my old high school coach came down and said, hey, I got to tell you something. My, your, Jerry killed himself this morning. I, it, it shook me to my core. So a couple of days after we buried him, I was in a, um, I was doing some cleaning work in off season for my dad. He had a cleaning business. I was in this old HR building, 100 plus offices, a vacuum and taking out trash and stuff. And I got in this room and 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 this tripped me out, Peter, David, and uh, Karen, and I and and I see my I see my sister Samantha. There. Hey, Samantha, she's awesome. And I literally looked on the floor, David, and there's a newspaper that was open to the obituary page with my one of my best friends ever, his face on it, looking at me in that office. Wow. I mean, I didn't even know what the chance was that it would be open to the obituary page. So here I was a few days before going to kill myself. I'm all devastated because and, and down and, you know, pouring out a little liquor because my friends done killed himself. And now I'm staring at him and Peter for about a minute. I looked at that paper. And after a minute of looking at that paper, I said, Jerry, I'm not going out like that. I said, if I'm going to go out, I'm going all out. And dude, I'm telling you, that's 1993. I've been going all out ever since. I'm blazing. I, if you come in, if you come in my world, I'm trying to maximize everything. I've, I've done as best I can to eliminate fear. I'm telling you, when you go in that spot and you make those kind of changes, you're gonna have opposition like you've never had before because it's very few people on earth that's gonna step in that realm of I'm unlimited. And, and and governments hate it. People in power hate it. And I've been chased by them all. They hate me all over the world, these different people that hate freedom because I'm unlimited. But guess what? The worst thing they can do, the worst thing that can happen to me is going to do what I was going to do in 1993. So when people try to you know intimidate me, I'm like, you think I care about that? I was going to kill myself, man. And my best friend did it. And so I'm still on the maxing out time. So that's what motivates me, Peter. You catching me on that mode, and I'm gonna be like it every time you see me. Especially Peter, when I get to roll with people like David Hill, man. This dude here, I, this is one of my dudes now. Well, hey, man, I'm, I'm. Let's go, Thank you bro. For sure, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. Thanks, Peter. Good question, man. Thank you for that. You're Appreciate welcome. that. All right, awesome. Well, listen, we are gonna wrap it up, man. I'm, I'm gonna change my, uh, I'm gonna change my schedule now for podcasts. I'm gonna tell people, you know, it's gonna be an hour, so. <laughs> Right. You know what I'm saying? Because, you, hey, because so, David, you uh, flow, man. Like literally, I want to give you kudos because you flow. How I was attracted to you from the first time I heard you speak. You you can't fake real. That's who you are, and I appreciate you. that, brother. Really, I do. Thank you, man. I appreciate you as well. Yeah, I definitely want to connect with you, man, offline as well. So appreciate you, and thank you for being on the show. All right, man. All right.